Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome back to Friday Fretworks. And this week, why I never lift a little finger. Well, not quite. <laughs> Last week, Slash was kind enough to repost that video that you just watched to his social media pages. It's a solo from a Cardinal Black track called Tied Up in Blue that was shot here in the UK at a festival called Winter's End that we played last month. Not unsurprisingly, Slash's social media following is fairly guitar-centric, so when he posts a video that's not himself, unsurprisingly, it elicited a lot of comments, not only about the playing, but about the technique of the guitar player involved, and specifically, how I wasn't really using my little finger on my fretting hand. Now there's no denying that in the course of that solo, I don't think I used my little finger once, although to be honest, you'd be hard pushed to find a video of me live where it gets used at all. Now, I recently did a masterclass for BIM, British Institute of Modern Music in London, which was chaired by a friend of mine, Phil Short, an amazing musician and Westlife's guitar player, if you're not familiar. In the course of our chat, Phil said something which really joined a few dots together for me. We recently shot a video together for Victory Amps, and he remarked that he'd never sat next to a guitar player who was so loud unplugged. I guess it's testament to the fact that, as he said, I'm fairly aggressive when I play. I guess it's a very nice way of saying that I'm heavy-handed. But as I said, it really did join a few dots for me. In a live context, at the very least, I tend to really dig in when I play. And for me, the three fingers that best facilitate that kind of tactile way of playing are my strongest fingers, my first, my second, and my third. I guess to a degree then, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in the respect that I don't use my little finger too much because it's the weaker finger, but of course, in doing so, it's not gonna get any stronger. But is that really a problem? I guess the first thing worth mentioning is that, of course, I do use my little finger. Whenever you read comments about yourself, or more specifically, your technique online, of course, it instigates a degree of introspection. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't find myself pouring back over a few recent episodes of Friday Threat Works just to see whether it is as much of a problem as some of the comments implied. And what I found surprised me, actually, in the sense that I do use my little finger a little bit more than I thought I actually did. I guess it's always been floating around in the back of my mind that it doesn't get anywhere near as much use as my other three fingers. And of course, the videos I watched kind of attest to that. But in the course of lead playing, it does get a little bit more use than I kind of was expecting to see. Whether it's arpeggio runs across multiple strings, maybe some stretchy kind of strange chord inversions here and there, or just general playing. I hope this next clip kind of demonstrates that to a degree. It's taken from a recent video I made about a Gibson Melody Maker shot at ATB Guitars. Thank you. 
One part of my playing, however, where my little finger undoubtedly gets put to infinitely more use than elsewhere is playing chords. Bar chords and open chords, of course, go without saying, but for those more kind of Hendrix-inspired or voice chords, it really is essential for those little flicks, hammer-ons and embellishments that really are intrinsic in that style of playing. Now, this next clip, I'm playing Bold as Love by Hendrix, and you can see how for those, as I said, those little flicks or maybe stretches where it's not really entirely practical to play with your third finger, out the little finger comes. That said, there are undoubtedly moments where I play something with my third finger that probably would have been better served playing with my little finger. But if I'm entirely honest, with something as kind of time consuming and laborious as filming yourself playing, you tend to gravitate towards what you know. And as I've already said, for me at least, that is my first, second and third finger. That said, there's no denying that in the course of making this video and having watched back various clips of myself playing live, Little Finger very rarely comes out in the heat of battle. It's just not something I've ever really done. Although that said, looking at any number of the players that I grew up being influenced or inspired by or trying to emulate in some small way are very much in the same boat in predominantly relying on their first three fingers. Stevie Ray, Clapton, Slash, David Gilmore, Jimi Hendrix to a degree, of course, that's not to say that they are solely reliant on their first three fingers. A quick YouTube search yields results of them, of course, using their little fingers in various contexts. But there's no denying that it's definitely not a case of their four fingers sharing the workload evenly. But is that really a problem? I guess ultimately it depends on what style of music that it is you're trying to play. If, like myself, you're rooted primarily in blues and rock, you could probably get away with predominantly using your index and your ring finger, your first and your third. The pentatonic shape kind of lends itself to that to a degree, and even more complex extensions of that scale, like the, say the harmonic minor, you could probably get away with just using your first three fingers. Now that's not to say that I would advocate that for a second, but people like Django Reinhardt are a great example of necessity kind of being the mother of invention to a degree. So of course there are people who need to find workarounds in that respect. Of course, if you're playing something that's going to be reliant on, say, legato, for example, not being able to use your fourth finger pretty much as proficiently as your other three is going to be a massive hindrance. Take a player like Tom Quayle, a mate of mine and a truly phenomenal guitar player who doesn't seem to have a dominant finger. It really is incredible to watch. And if Tom wasn't as dexterous with his little finger as he was his first three, it would undoubtedly hinder his playing. All of that said, contrary to numerous comments that I've read in the process of making this video, either on my own videos, the one Slash reposted, or even forum posts from years gone by, I would say that not being as proficient with your little finger as you are your other three, or not using it anywhere near as much, really isn't the worst thing in the world. And this obsession that we can have with technique, I would say is very much driven by the fact that you are arguably more likely to see a guitar player in this day and age, thanks to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook or Twitter, than you are to be exclusively listening to them on record. And nearly all of the musicians that we grew up listening to, being inspired by, or as I said, trying to emulate in some small way, all had idiosyncrasies and quirks in their playing. It's what made them unique and instantly identifiable. And at the end of the day, we are only human. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.